Hello and welcome to this week's Force.com Comcast episode. This is the first of a multi-part series we're going to run on Sockle performance. In this first episode, we're going to look at multi-tenancy and the Force.com query optimizer and how they work together to improve your query performance and to write the most uh, performant queries for you to use when retrieving data from the database. So Salesforce is a multi-tenant environment. Um, and in the background, there are effectively a series of different tables that are uh, being stored within an Oracle database. And these hold all of the data for all of the uh, users for that Salesforce instance. So on the left-hand side here, we can see that there is a series of tables for you know, standard objects that store all the standard data fields for them. Um, so that would be something like the uh, first name and last name on contact. We have uh, custom objects and a table that stores all of the data fields on custom objects. And we then have an, another data table that stores all of the custom fields for our standard objects. And uh, yeah, this is a very high level view of Salesforce's data architecture in the background. Um, but on the right hand side, we can see in the green boxes, we have a series of different pivot tables for allowing us to you know, create indexes and correctly retrieve the data. So something like um, an index table for the different fields that are indexed. Um, and we'll go through what indexes are and how indexing works in future videos. Um, but also we have a table for how uh, unique fields are enforced and also one for foreign key relationships. So when we have a lookup relationship or a master detail relationship, we have a table for storing the foreign keys that allow that to work properly. Because Salesforce has these many, many tables, whenever you want to run a query and retrieve some data, um, a series of joins must be written that retrieve the data from these tables. And if you imagine for something like the standard object table, um, given that you know that there are many, many hundreds of thousands of Salesforce customers, they're all storing probably you know, a couple of hundred up to a couple of million of accounts each, that table can have hundreds of millions of rows. And so retrieving that data is very costly. So you want to try and optimize the way in which it runs. So Salesforce have built the force.com query optimizer. And what that does is that takes a series of different, um, so it takes your SQL query, whether it's in a report or a list view or just a plain old uh, SQL query, and then finds the best way of writing that as a SQL query so it selects the best table from our previous slide to run the main query on, and then comes up with the correct uh, series of joins to retrieve the data for you. So how does the optimizer work? Well, it's a multi-step process. The first thing it does is it runs some pre-queries, and these are on uh, user visibility and field selectivity, or filter selectivity, sorry. Um, and yeah, that uses a bunch of pre-computed statistics that help you to decide the best way in which to retrieve the data. So Things like the row count is pre-calculated uh, for that object. Um, the owner count to allow you to do uh, owner field uh, queries really, really uh, efficiently for reports. Also, user vis uh, visibility statistics are stored so that that can kind of help the uh, optimizer understand how many records could be retrieved by a particular user uh, in running a particular query. Um, so, for example, if you're a system admin, you can see the entire database um, whereas if you're just a uh, standard user, um, you may have a far more selective um, filter. So you might see, uh, may see far more, uh, fewer records. Once that's uh, been analyzed, the system will then go away and it will select the optimal filters and it will then build up a query for you. So it will use one of those tables that was on our last slide and it will decide which one's best, which filter to use as the first filter to kind of reduce the, uh, retrieve the smallest amount of data that we can work with. Um, and then it'll build up the uh, SQL query to run on the Oracle database, um, and it will then go away and execute that query and return the results for us. So at a high level, we've seen what the optimizer kind of does and why we need it, but um, before we kind of go on in the future videos to discuss you know, how we can improve performance through indexing, how we can you know, make our queries more performant, how selectivity works and things like that, um, it's probably worth just spending a moment or two quickly just discussing why it's important. So there are three main reasons that um, you know, queries uh, are very important when it comes to efficiency. And the first of which is the most noticeable, and that is user experience. So if your query is inefficient, your reports, your list views, and more importantly, your page methods are going to run slowly. So if you have an Apex method where it's doing a query and that query isn't very performant or very optimized, your page will refresh slower, your page will run slower, and your users will experience that. Uh, page slowdown. And this is one of these things that it can be an unknown bottleneck that kind of stops people from wanting to use the system. 
Secondly, um, governor limits are obviously in place <laughs> for the system. The first uh, governor limit you might know about is the different concurrent requests and current API limits you have and the number of rows you can retrieve. But one of the things we'll discuss in the future videos is the idea of a query cost. So Salesforce has a query plan tool we'll be reviewing um, in upcoming videos to show you how to use it properly. Um, but with each query, there's an associated cost value for it. Um, and if you pass a certain cost value, the query does not get run for you. The final thing you need to think about as well is scalability for going forward. So often when you're writing uh, your queries, you're running them against a development environment where you might have, I don't know, a couple of you know, tens of records, maybe a couple of hundred records if you're doing volume testing for your own testing practices. Um, but you need to think about how your records will scale and how your queries will scale after, say, a year of operation or two years of operation. You know, when people have been creating many, many, many thousands of records within your system, is your query still going to be performant? Is it still going to be efficient? And will it still retrieve the records in the expected manner? If you can think about this earlier on, it means that your long-term cost of ownership is going to be lower, but also that your system is going to perform no matter how many places it's put into. And this is particularly important for ISVs. So that's a quick overview of the multi-tenant environment and force.com query optimizer. And in upcoming videos, we're going to talk through indexing, um, how to write better queries, and also how filters work and the query plans all.